Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 where we calculate the diameter of the hair with small angle scattering using the measurements that we've just done in part 1. So we've measured these oscillations in, the, uh, in part 1 uh, which in a 2D plot look like this. This is the way that cylinders scatter, so with a scattering angle Q and our intensity I. The oscillation maxima that we've measured uh, lie at a distance of delta Q. And uh, without further going into the details, uh, uh, pi over delta Q is related to the radius of the cylinder, so that uh, 2 pi over delta Q is related to the diameter of the cylinder. Q itself is defined as 4 pi sine theta over lambda, uh, where lambda is the wavelength. So that means that delta Q uh, is, can be approximated as 4 pi sine delta theta, delta theta, which is our scattering angle, uh, over that wavelength. So if we take a closer look at the lasers to find out the wavelength, you will actually see that I work with some scary people. One of them bought this green laser with a wavelength of 532 millimeters. Obviously, that should be nanometers. And uh, the red laser, which is a bit too powerful for your average laser pointer, uh, has a wavelength of 660 nanometers. So we write that down on our whiteboard with our green laser light of 532 nanometers and the red light of 660 nanometers. So in order to understand what we're doing, let's draw our experiment. So we have the laser in green and the whiteboard on, in black here. We have our sample situated over here. And this sample uh, scatters, uh, or its oscillations scatter to these angles here. Uh, now we define our scattering angle as uh, 2 theta, which means that the difference uh, between the oscillations we can write as 2 delta theta. This distance between the oscillations we've measured as 1.75 centimeters, and the distance between the sample and the whiteboard is 300 centimeters. So we now start calculating the scattering angle, so 2 delta theta is the arctangent of 1.75 over 300, which comes out to 0.334 degrees. So that means that delta theta is 0 0.167 degrees. Plug this into our equations and we find that delta Q is 6.89 times 10 to the minus 5. And of course, this is inverse nanometers because our wavelength of our lasers, which we've plugged into our equations, is in nanometers. Our radius of the hair com then comes to 45.6 micrometers, so that our diameter becomes 91.2 micrometers. So we draw, the, draw this all up in a table, uh, together with the other calculations, which I haven't shown here, but you can do at home. Um, so we have two samples, one from Kirsten and one from Sophie. And we have two lasers, one green laser and one red laser. So we see if we do this calculation that, of course, the first value we've just done is 91.2 micrometers for the diameter. For Sophie's hair, uh, whose hair is actually a lot thinner, uh, this is 64.9 micrometers. If we calculate the same with the red lasers, uh, we of course find that, uh, that the diameter of the hair doesn't change because, of course, it doesn't matter which laser we take for this. Um, and this is because we've, uh, we've taken that into account in our calculation of Q. So Q is wavelength independent. So with this, we've calculated the diameters of the hairs. Yeah.